On this week's show, how to find your gold mine area. In the news, Libra announced a new progressive property tax. And we're going to answering all your property related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to this week's Property Investors Podcast. We've got a really good show lined up. We're going to be talking about how you can find your gold mine area, so the, you know, good places to buy your property. And we're also going to be talking about a very interesting article, Labour introducing this new property tax, which I think is pretty, uh, well, we haven't really talked about it yet, but it's been pretty interesting when, when, when we do. So it's going to be a great show. But first of all, how have you been, buddy? You had a good week? I have had an awesome week. Amazing. Um, I've been in London all day today, um, yep. chilling out, enjoying the sights. Um, yeah, really cool. What about yourself? That sounds, that sounds brilliant. What sights have you seen? <laughs> Tower Bridge. <laughs> The Thames. Tower, we've seen the everything, Thames. Maria. We're, we're obviously filming this live, so if you w- w- realise, annoyingly, so I'm so pissed off that these are closed. Yeah, I must admit. Because really the good. view is, in, you guys won't ever see it, you watching at home, but the view is incredible. If you've been here, honestly, it's awesome. You can literally see everywhere. And in, when we were talking about investing earlier, it, um, we had a little networking session. And I'd say to someone, oh, okay, so wh- where do you invest? And they'd be able to show me. They'd go, oh, hold, come over here. Over there mm. uh, is Woolwich or over there. Uh, two or three people actually were pointing out we can see that much of, of London from here. It is, it it is, is pretty incredible. cool because we're quite high up. We're on the 25th floor, so you get a really good view of the area. But have you ever realised the Thames was so dirty? Well, <laughs> uh, it's filthy. Not from here. No, you can't see it from here. But when we're out looking out the window, it's, it's like... Looking just, out the, from here, you saw the Thames. It was that bad. Are you being serious? Well, it's literally just there. Yeah, but you can't tell it's dirty from here. Well, you can tell it's a discoloured. The state of it, man. Really? Yeah. I'm sure it is filthy. I'm sure. I wouldn't nice, want to fall There is it. some nice um, rats in there. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a few other things in there as well, to be honest. So. Like what? Like bodies. <laughs> oh, bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I bet there is. It's some. I bet it's somewhere in the Thames. There's bodies. Maybe for only like twenty. People months. are saying, "Yeah, I'm like freaking it's out." It's because they're from London. <laughs> they know what happens. <laughs> really? Body? Yeah, oh, gosh. Of course. Man, I was So what have you been doing to today London. then? Well, I've literally travelled here. Okay. I can get to central London in an hour on the train from Litchfield. Yeah. You drove, didn't you? It took me four hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't have time to go to my hotel, so I had to come straight here because the hotel's... Is that why you're not dressed properly? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> cool. Pretty much. Okay, so uh, let's, let's, get, let's get cracking. How to find your gold mine area. So I yeah. suppose, first of all, the question you've got to ask yourself, you're looking for a gold mine area, is what sort of strategy, because it will depend, Absolutely. what sort of strategy you're going to be doing. Should we just pick one strategy for the time being? Okay, well, what do you want to pick? HMOs. Okay, so you you want to buy a HMO? Yeah. Uh, what's your first tip on how to find a good area? How to find a gold mine patch that works um, for HMOs? Okay, so for HMOs, the first thing you need to know is that it will work. A HMO probably will work in that area. So you need to know there's demand for rooms. Um, you need to know that there is not an oversaturation of current HMOs. Okay. Um, so for instance, I literally, I just shared with Lawrence a minute ago, um, I've got HMO in Hull, which is generally seen as a little bit of an oversaturated area. Um, my property went live literally, we were on Thursday, went live on Monday. Um, I had four tenants by Wednesday. I just got the phone call today that they were all signed up yesterday and they're due to move in two on Friday, two next Monday. You had four tenants in two days? Yep. That is pretty impressive. And they're paying pretty much full market rent. Um, so thir- pretty I think much full market Well, I, I watched 1400 um, for the property, um, but it's actually getting about 1360 So it's, it's, I'm happy with that. Yeah? Um, and that, I didn't even buy that property. That, that's a lease option property. So... One of those bloody free houses only bringing you in 1360. You know, it's funny oh, because... Full market rent <laughs> 1400. <laughs> it's funny because, uh, do you know, we, I see this all the time on, on, on like YouTube and people making comments about how you, lease options aren't possible and you can't do lease options and they don't work. That was so David Brent. <laughs> so, somebody else said I've done a David Brent earlier. I don't know who this guy here. Yeah. Pe- pe- people say to me all the time on YouTube, you know, lease options don't work. <laughs> Well, I'm a, listen, I've got multiples. What? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You um, have? I've got multiple lease okay. options, and they're all fully tenanted. Um, so don't tell me it don't work. <laughs> and, don't, and don't tell me you I can't won't. do them with using low money, because I've done it with low money. I won't tell so you. So the, the, the one in Hull was literally £750 plus legals. Um, that was how much it cost me to get the keys. 
So it's, it's, it's incredible. It's crazy, isn't it? I, I, yeah. you know, normally I wouldn't do this, but as we have a live audience, I think he deserves a hat. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 come on. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't know we do it because it would just be me and Nick. We'd be like, <laughs> be a bit crap um, um, do it um, so okay how do we find the gold medal? okay area? well the first thing you mentioned was you need to find an area that that works yep so how do you how do you pick an area how do you find an area that you know is going to work you said I, I you just said hall was oversaturated yet you still rented it out in like two days yeah, yeah absolutely so how do you how, how do you know whether an area is going to work or not um, well, okay so the first thing i would do is i would always try and stay to like a, 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 a large town or a city um, ideally a university city or things that have got things like cities that have got things going on um, so like rather than hospitals. all those cities that have got no, nothing no, no. going on I mean there's places up north mate where there's cities like and there's, there's, there's <laughs> nothing going on like Blackpool um, sorry Glenn <laughs> <laughs> there is places where there's just not a lot of activity mm. there's no jobs there's, there's no, not a lot of industry yeah so a big city so bustling need, city a lot of things be big university businesses yeah. etc um Cities that have got training hospitals are good as well because yeah. they have a lot of turnover of people I there. I found that a lot six actually. Six when, we, when we were like, obviously, we were managing a lot of properties in Wolverhampton and Warsaw, and the ones that were near the hospitals, mm-hmm. just they would just Why go, are. like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that. Do you know? Interestingly, like both um, both my lease option HMOs, they were both filled up within two weeks. Like and they're near universities, they're near hospitals, mm. they're near city centres. So okay, so you pick an area, yeah. big town, big city, whatever it is. It's bustling, got a lot of people. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, got to look and see where you think it's going to work. So yeah, and also th- there has to be a supply of property in that area that will be suitable for HMOs. Well, that's the if, gonna, next thing. Once you found a good area, then you need to test the ROI, right? Yeah, so ROI. So you pick the area first. So you found an area, you go on places like Spare Room. Yeah. And you have a look and you see what. See what, how much they're renting out for, how much rooms are renting out for, yeah. um, and how much you can buy a property for. If the if the properties are like like Samuel has a ru- like a, a rule of thumb, it's not set in stone. Twenty five to thirty thousand pound per lettable room. So if if the property is three hundred thousand pound, it's a four bed. It ain't really going to work. See, um, so you've me, got to have a supply me, of property around about hundred k. It's all about the ROI. Yeah. So if you're spending forty thousand pound a room, yeah, but you're getting good return on investment, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, so if you're spending 40k per room, yeah. property is typically, what, 160, 200? Yeah. But you could buy two properties at 100k and have eight rooms. True. True. <laughs> Don't have much of a comeback for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But what I'm talking about, if, if you've got a good return on investment, so yeah. let's say, for example, let's say you bought one for 120. Okay, I suppose this begs the question now about three-bed HMOs and stuff like that. But let's say you bought one for 120 mm. that gave you a good ROI on a three-bed. Yeah. Does it matter that it's only 40 grand a room? It doesn't, does it? No, it doesn't matter, but would it not be better to diversify a little bit? I think it would. I have less risk. I would rather have... 120 grand is not a big risk, is it, surely? It is to some people. Who thinks 120,000 pounds is a big risk? It's all right, money bags. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you're not putting in 120 grand 120 cash, grand, that's nothing, <laughs> isn't it? Well, come on, man. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay. Right, um, so uh, if you're going to spend like 40, 50,000 pounds on a property, you could easily get two or three, pro- like two, not three, but you could get two properties. True. Like there's certain places in the country, like Liverpool, you can so get what's the, So what's, what's the advantage of getting two properties over one property? Because you have more rooms, that's more risk. So no, it's not more, if the ROI is the same, what's the advantage? We just talked about ROI. So you're talking about ROI? Okay, yeah, fine. so what's the, what's the advantage of having two over one? Because um, if, if you think about from it, from an ROI point of view, there's not because well, it's the so same from an ROI point of view, there's not, and it also means you've got double the work to manage two properties. Why have we got double the work? Well, you, it's not. It's not. How many properties do you have, Russell? I, I know. I know. I know how you're going to answer this question. You have properties. Yeah. Do you Mate, do the work? Believe me. Right. Believe me now. Okay. <laughs> He's then, getting stressed. I'm not getting stressed. I'm not getting stressed. You're not going to beat me in an argument, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> right. Right, here's the thing. You're right. Don't tell me that you don't do any work on your properties at all, even if it's just managing the managers. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. But it's minimal. It's minimal. I actually, do you know, when I first got involved, I was very hands-on. And you, you know it was, because like, I was, I was tired. I, I, I told you what. And you had a go at me about it. You said, what are you doing, man? And then... Um, 
I very quickly learned to get a HMO manager to do that. But even with a HMO manager, you've still got to step in at times. Yeah, but it's minimal. Um, yeah. I think I would rather pay. I personally, okay, come back from to an it. R- that. R- ROI point of view, mm-hmm. it makes no difference because the money in, money out, yeah? Mm-hmm. But from a risk point of view, I would rather have eight tenants paying eight different rents than four tenants paying rent. Because if two tenants stop paying rent in the four properties, in the, the four rooms, you're only getting two rents. True. Uh, it's just I don't so know, it's you've also got all the cap- capital appreciation of two, two properties, properties going yeah, up rather than yeah. one. But again, what I was going to say is it depends on the area. So if yeah. you bought two properties in a bit of a crap area, but then you bought one in an area that was going up, who knows? But anyway, yeah. it's more about your ROI. But okay, 25, 30 grand, 35 maybe. Yeah. Birmingham is a bit more expensive, mm-hmm. where we've got some now. Um, other areas are a bit cheaper. So you find an area, you go on spare room, you <coughs> check and you look at, and one of the things that Simon always talks about at the crash course is um, when you look on spare room, you've got two different types of ads. You've got people that are advertising properties yeah, and then you've got people that are advertising themselves. Yeah, it's a bit weird, yeah. isn't it? It is a bit weird. And people always say, oh, there's more properties than there are people looking. But the thing you've got to remember is that everyone puts their property on, <coughs> whereas yeah. most people that are looking for a property don't put themselves on as someone they just go and look at the properties like most, a, most sane people don't yeah know. most sane people do yeah so you can't you can't judge it totally by no. that but you can get an idea do you know what i like about spare room is it lists a lot of hmo managers because they're generally advertising the rooms so you can ring them up yeah. um, and they don't it, sometimes if you like google hmo managers in a specific area they, you, they're not advertising and mm-hmm. um, but you, you find them on spare room and open rent and things like yeah, that yeah and the truth and, and the it, thing is that they're, they're often very honest Yes. Because they don't want a property that they can't rent out. Exactly. Because it's just hassle. It is hassle. Um, as someone that's managed loads of HMOs, I certainly didn't want anyone, any, unless they're brand new and just desperate for business, yeah. anyone that's been established a bit, they will be honest with you about the area where it works, whether it's saturated or not, the type of rents you'll get. So ring in those. So do a bit of, do a little bit of due diligence. You know, in Hull, um, I found the HMO managers are actually turning a lot of people away because they're saying, look, we want to look at your property first. And then even, they come out and they look at it and they're like, no, it's rubbish, we're not going to rent it. We're not even interested in putting it on our books. Yeah. Um, so they're making them very high standard. And that's where... And they, they'll be like, oh, it's on that street, no. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah. they know the streets that work, they know what works. So, and they also know what rents out quickly. Um, and that's why like, there's a lot of people, a lot of people say HMOs don't work. Right, they do. There's loads of people say it online. They say the HMOs don't work. They don't fill the rooms up. Things like that. Right? The reality is, when you start looking at the property that they're trying to rent out, I wouldn't live there. Like, would you live? Like, some of them are just disgusting. No, but you wouldn't live in a HMO. Full stop. Yeah, but if, if I was, I wouldn't live in some of these minging rooms. And like, they've got dirty furniture. Like, it's just disgusting. And I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of HMOs, and many of them are filth, <laughs> and they're absolutely grim. And like, I'm like, no wonder this place will not rent out. So this is true. Like, my property in Wolverhampton, I was, we were talking about this actually on the podcast we filmed yesterday, but I'll just quickly share. Um, the, the landlord, when I was agreeing the terms on the lease auction, the landlord said to me, you'll never get more than 600 pounds for this property. And I'm like, okay, thank, thank you for sharing. Just, I'm happy to take that risk. And then he said, you're crazy, you're gonna regret this. That property rents out for 1,600 pounds because I put a little bit of effort and time into it and I've made it immaculate. And he, didn't, he wasn't prepared to do that. And my, my time and effort to make it immaculate cost 4,000 pounds. So I, in three months, that, I've got that back. So the ROI on that property is crazy. Mm. It, it's utter crazy. That was a lease option as well. Lease it? option, yes. Yeah. yeah, and I can, and interestingly, I can buy it in five years, and it's already worth what I've agreed to buy it in five years for. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so that's the, that's the, that's the second step. Don't, don't clap him again. Yeah, he, he's already had a clap once before. That's enough claps for him now. <laughs> um, you got so, another lease option you want clapping for? I have actually, oh, yeah. but we'll, we'll save that for another day. Um, okay, so they've got to be a supplier of properties in the area. Um, reasonably priced properties that so pick an area uh, that's uh, reasonably cheap to buy yeah looking at 35 30 35 grand per yeah. room yeah. per lettable room mm-hmm. then go on spare room ring the managers have yeah. a look what the demands like see what I, see I personally wouldn't just ring the manager so that when you're picking your gold mine area you want your gold mine area to be your area you should know that inside out so you Samuel talks about big days get out there Boots on ground, get out there, go into the agents, actually go and sit down with them. And you'll find if you make the effort to go and actually sit down in front of an estate, uh, a letting agent, they'll have a lot more time for you. Mm. If you just ring them up, guess what? You're just another random calling them up, asking for free advice. And what happens when people ring us for free advice? 
I say, watch the podcast. Watch the podcast. Ask a question on there. Yeah. And I'll maybe answer it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you're not going to spend very long with them, are you? No. Whereas if you, if they take the effort to actually go into that estate agent and say, look, I'm looking to I'm looking to get a HMO in the area. I'm looking for somebody to manage it. Can you just... Before I make a, a rush into someone, I wanted to get a little bit of advice. Can you just advise the best places? Um, mm. And obviously, I'll, I'll and, and if need be, offer to pay for their time. Say, like, look, I'll happily pay for an hour of your time if you can just help me. Mm. Cost you 30 quid or 40 quid or whatever, whatever it is. It's well worth it. I've done this in Doncaster. <clears throat> I went to an agent in Doncaster, and um, I literally just walked in, and I, I said to them, look, I'm looking to buy some properties in the area. I don't want to buy the wrong ones. Um, can I just sit down with you for half an hour? Um, I'm more than happy to cover your costs and pay, your, pay for your time if you can just advise me in the best places. And any I buy, I will happily put, use your services. And they were the most helpful people. I was in there for like an hour and a half. They actually took me out and we went and looked at some properties and looked at some areas. And they told me all the gold mine areas in Doncaster, all the streets to buy in, the streets to avoid. And that's why the, the last two or three properties I bought in Doncaster for investors for, as a sourcing business, They've rented out within two weeks. Mm. That's why, because I'd done my due diligence first. I didn't, I didn't rush into a property and then say, ah, now we need to get a letting agent for it. I've done it the other way around. Yeah, and then the other thing you can do, I suppose, is once you've highlighted the areas, you can just wait for properties to come up. Come up. You can have, if you've gone and done this in different areas mm -hmm. and just wait for the properties to come up, because yeah. it might be a street that's a brilliant street, it's got nothing for sale right now. What is that, what lesson's that? Don't be a motivated buyer, be a patient buyer. Yeah. Property's a long game. You've got to be in the long game. Don't rush out and just buy a house because you're desperate to get one in your gold mine patch. Yeah. You could even set up like right move alerts, couldn't you? Alerts, Pick yeah. Little actually. areas that are going to work well. Have the alerts <coughs> coming through. So as soon as one comes up in that area, yeah. bang, you get an email come through. Yeah. Um, let, letting you know. You know yeah, the, absolutely. The, the price. You, can set the, um, you can set the price and the amount of rooms and yeah. stuff you want. Uh, so be well and also right move. Uh, it's about six months ago. They added a key, uh, feature keyword for mm. up and running HMOs. So, Ideally, like, do you know, if you're looking for your gold mine patch and there's up and running HMOs in there <coughs> that are for sale, that are a bit run down, they're, they're the good ones to buy. Um, especially once you've confirmed by a letting agent that they'll work. Yeah. So that's step three. Make sure there's a supplier property um, and you spoke to a letting agent. Yeah. What would be step four? Step four is to work out your ROI. ROI, How yeah. much is it going to cost? How much are you going to get out of it? Um, and make sure it stacks. <coughs> you want to be looking at 20% plus. I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah. You know, there's no point doing it for less than that. There's not, but I do have, I've got a massive list of investors overseas all over the place, and I've got investors that are very happy with 10%. They're very awesome, happy. but when it's very easy to make 20. Why would you make 10? Why yeah. would you make 10? Yeah. So I would, I would add a, a fifth step to this, power, power team. You need to know that in your area, you've got a good power team, or you've got access to, to people that can assist if you're doing any refurb, because we don't always want to be doing the work ourselves. Um, so uh, as a company, we've, we've built a, a, a network of, of uh, builders, contractors, um, all sorts, plumbers, electricians, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, do you want me to share how I've done that? Yes, please. Do you want me to share how I've done that? Yes, please. Well, I don't, I've been outvoted, so go on. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, can you keep it quiet? You have to, don't, don't promise, this doesn't leave this room. Is that all right? Your letting agent. That's all I need to say. Your letting agent has a list of all these people. A list of people that they are trusted, that they are cheap, and they're, they've done plenty of work for the letting agent. And they're not gonna let you down. The letting agent is your best, your best source and supply of tradesmen. That's it. You heard it here first. We did, we did. <laughs> So what about step seven? Well, you're just adding steps now. Yeah, why not? We keep doing it and keep going. I got, okay, step seven. Can, can, I, can I add one thing? If, unless you know it. Unless you know it. You know go on, you go on, you go. You know, you know. uh, right, okay. Go and visit the area. And go and visit the area at night. Kind of mentioned that before. Oh, night though. We didn't mention night. Yeah, go and visit it at night. Um, a case, case in point, I, I sold a property to an investor. Um, and he did go and visit it at night. And realised there was a quite a few unsavory people hanging around near the property and uh, things like that. Did he say hi to you? <laughs> yeah, he helped pick me up. <laughs> and who's, um, that, who's that unsavory? Oh, it's, it's, there's loads of HMO people that are just scouting the area out. <laughs> um, I, I would always this is just Alex, Alistair's excuse for going around, like, if he ever gets caught, he's like, oh, I did say, yeah. <laughs> I hang around dodgy areas at night. 
Um, yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, yeah, just um, I would go up there and look at night, make sure see what's going on at night, um, because a lot of. So, what's the best story you've you've had when you've done this? What's the best thing you've seen? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, go on. No, I can't. I can't <laughs> you I can't, can't, tell you can't say that. Right. You, if you, if there's you just two. Don't... There's two. Okay, that's even better. What's the first? <laughs> oh, man. Right, okay. This, this, was like this. this was Nothing in Hull. This was in Hull. Right, this was in Hull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I sold a property to an investor. Um, it was on a road called Chongley Street. Um, it's in HU3. Really nice house. Really nice house. Um, but at the end of the house is a drive, and that's the, it's the, so it's the end terrace, and there's a nice drive. And my investor turned up to look at their house, and he found a woman passed out, drunk, middle of the day, in the front, hanging middle over the, the wall. Middle of the day? Yeah. Um, turns out she'd, like, she was a bit of a, a local drug dealer, a, a local um, drug, ad, drug addict, and um, he pulled out the property. Uh, he said he didn't want to do it anymore. Um, because she was like she she sort of leant against the wall and she's passed out. She was covered in sick and all that. And it was in his front garden. So <laughs> and he he, um, he uh, his new house. This is the house and, uh, I recommend you buy. He he phoned he, he did phone an ambulance, but uh, and then he rung me up and he goes, Alistair, that house I just bought from you. Um, I've just found a, a drug addict and a drug addict in the uh, the front garden. Um, I think you might have to find me another one. <laughs> and um, oh, okay, fair enough. All right, can't argue with that really. So I'm guessing the other one's worse. I'm not going to dis- review the You've got to tell the no, other no, no, one. Because no. it involves somebody that... that, that well, don't name them. Right, tell fine. The story. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's in Wolverhampton. It was at my HMO. Okay. Right. Right. Turns out it's in the right red light district. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it is. Um, and so, we, uh, a couple of us were actually out in Wolverhampton one night. In and the red light district? No. <laughs> and then my HMO was finished, fully furnished, immaculately yeah. ready to go. So, we just decided to stay there one night instead of booking a hotel. And as we were all walking back from the, uh, the, the town at like two o'clock in the morning, there was more prostitutes than I've ever seen in my life. And um, we all got propositioned. And, and you have been to Amsterdam, haven't you? Ah, uh, yeah, I've been to Amsterdam. And there was more in Wolverhampton? Yes, <laughs> yes. And Don't like, say yes literally, like that. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and Why do you think I bought a house there? <laughs> yeah. Um, and they were like, they literally hang outside the front of the house, um, just probably, 20, 30 yards that way because we're right at the very end of the street and it's like a known area for them. Um, but do you know what? I don't care because it rents out. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't care. Who, who, I don't care, but see, some investors do because some investors get emotionally tied to, th- emotionally tied to things. Well, hold on, hold on. What I don't get about that story is, yeah. like, why did you not want to name the person? Because, because I've not told the full story. Um, okay. But <laughs> I, I knew there was more. What happened? No, just because uh, um, he's a student and he got offered student discount and all sorts. <laughs> Did you have to show his NUS card? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's funny. He asked. Uh, we were only playing games with him, but he asked. And um, she said, yeah, I'll do student discount. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. <laughs> Move on. Come on. But my, my, the interesting thing, there's a key lesson here. Don't get emotionally tied to the property you're buying. It's an investment. It doesn't matter what's going on there. As long as, it doesn't, as long as the tenants are happy to live there. Yes? When you said we were playing games with them, not like that. <laughs> As in, we were walking past, and they were trying to pr- proposition us, and we were just having a laugh, and then we just continued walking. Okay. So, okay. Cool. Not like that. So go, go late at night. 2 a.m. Mm. What's the perfect time? I, I, mean, I don't know. I've never been there again since. So. No, but did you go and check out what a property at night? What's the perfect time? I would say early evening. Um, um, seven? Yeah, seven. Just really? see what's going on nearby. Ten. See what... I know somebody that went and literally parked outside his HMO and stayed there like five hours just to see what's going on, see, see if, if there's people... Well, I know someone that was selling a house and yeah. the people that were buying it said to them, listen, we want a quiet house, is it quiet? And they said, yeah, yeah, it's quiet. Like, okay, can we come round yeah. one evening and just sit in your lounge and just make sure that it is quiet? And they were like, okay, yeah, sure. And they just came around, they just sat there all evening. And then they were like, Interesting. Yeah, that's quite enough, and they left. Yeah, but that, I mean, that, <laughs> that's not clearly not an investment property. That's a, a, a property, a, a home. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. So that's obviously a bit more important because nobody wants to live in a noisy home with noisy no. neighbours. So I, I get that, but as an investment property, yeah. as long as the property has good demand and we'll rent out, then I think we're fairly happy with cool. that. And the final thing that I would say as well, in finally gold mine, not really gold mine area, but what would you look for if you're buying, because we're talking about HMOs, what would you look for in a house 
to make sure that it's a good, you know, it's a good, going to be a good... Mm-mm. I suddenly lost the ability to speak, which is bad considering this is a podcast. But <laughs> I really have. What do you look for in a house to make sure that it's going to be a good HMO? Um, you mean condition-wise or layout or anything like that? Dude, everything. <clears throat> okay. So we always try and work with four bedrooms. Um, the reason being is three bedrooms I don't think is enough. Um, and typically, the reason being is because if you see a four-bedroom property, yeah. approximate one week will pay your, your um, mortgage or your lease option or whatever. One week's rent, that is. Um, and then the other week's rent will pay the bills. And that leaves two full rents, which is profit. One so, week's rent or one, one, one room? No, no. That's two. Ah, sorry. So saying, yeah. typically, a HMO, about 45% of the income goes out to expenses and costs, mm-hmm. mortgages and things like that. So you make sort of 50, 45 so if you do to 55%. Three bed, you're losing 25%. Yeah, and then if you have one tenant, if you have a void period, something like that, it's just a little bit hard on a three bed. Um, so I would always go, I wouldn't do a three bed. Um, and four is ideal because with five, you need the licensing. Yeah, you go to and licensing. Sort of okay, but so I don't like five. That's what I said because you need no, the no, licensing. No, no, I would rather go six. Uh, yeah. That's so I would rather do four or six or seven. I agree. Because five is just not worth that extra. For all the extra hassle. It's not Whereas worth with it. six, it is. It is, yeah. So four or six. six? Yeah, four or six. But I mean, a good five is already up and running, it's slightly different, but I wouldn't convert, if you're going to go to all the effort and money of converting a normal four house to a, a four, five. Yeah, go, yeah, go yeah. above, yeah. Okay, so you're looking for four lettable rooms, and by lettable yeah. room it needs to be 70 square feet. Minimum 70 square feet, however that does vary slightly um, if you put on suites in now. Um, but all I would do is, your gold mine patch, you need to know the rules. Mm. And who is the best source of rules in that Goldman patch? Council. Council. HMO officer at the council. Um, and actually, do you know, they're really helpful. They really want to help you. So they're not... They're not um, out to get you. They're not out to get you. They're not out to try and stitch you up. They're out to help you. So if you go to them first and say, look, I'm thinking of buying this property. Again, you might have to pay for their time. Um, last time I, I got some debt, it was £95. They come out and they went through the whole property for me and they assessed everything. Um, and they said, look, this will work and it will be good and it would be very easily get a license because that was going to be a six bedder. Mm. Um, so speak to the HMO officer, you'll get good results from that. Um, the, the other thing is local HMO manager. Ask them about the rules and regulations for an area. And also things like be aware of Article 4. If it's not enforced at, at present, find out when it's going to be enforced if, it's, if that information is available. Yep. Now, the, the, the government and the council have to give you 12 months' notice before they um, enforce it. Actually, we should have mentioned that really in the looking for the area. You need to make sure it's not an Article 4 area. Yeah. Because if it is, even if everything else stacks up, you've got to get planning. And um, it's just, it just doesn't, it just it's doesn't not happen, worth it. it. It's no. not worth it. Um, but also with Article 4, there's certain places, it's not city, like Wolverhampton, citywide, right? Uh, Walsall, there's none. There is, there's a road. There's okay, a tiny I was just going to get to that. Some areas have just like touched, like Liverpool's got like ha- about 20 roads. Birmingham's got a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So don't just think Article 4, that's it, I'm done, I can't, I can't invest in that city. Hull's the same. Hull's got a little bit of Article 4, but actually the best places to get HMOs are outside the Article 4. That's why, and I think they've just done it in 12 months' time, Article 4 has now been extended to cover that area. I genuinely blame Samuel for Wolverhampton's Article 4. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> I, I genuinely do. Yeah. Yeah, because they literally he was just buying them left, right, left, right, yeah. and, then, and then suddenly they brought, they brought um, put Article 4 in. But do you know what's good with areas that have got Article 4? What? There's always tired landlords in there, always. And like, Wolverhampton's got a lot of up and running HMOs that are just run down, landlords want rid of them, and they're cheap. Yeah. And it's a good area to rent out. Very, very true. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, I think we've, uh, we've <coughs> covered that. It's now time for this. Okay, so in the news this week, uh, this has just been announced, Labour's progressive property tax explained. So Labour are basically proposing a new property tax, mm-hmm. and but the levy will be paid by the landlords rather than the tenants. Okay. Which shocks me. I wouldn't have thought Labour would do something like that, but hey-ho. Um, Labour is considering placing council tax with a new progressive property tax. Yeah, it's bad already, isn't it? It is. That would set nationally and paid by property owners rather than the tenants. The proposals are part of a raft of policy recommendations in a Labour Commission report on land use. The aim is to reduce the tax paid by the majority of households and discourage the, the use of homes as financial assets. 
Why are the government always trying to punish landlords? Who knows? Always. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so that's kind of the basic. So basically what the plan will be is rather than having a usual council tax, yeah. it'll be a different scheme where the homeowner pays the council tax rather than rather than the tenants, which is just like, another, like you say, it's another thing of, of, of the government trying to hit yeah. um, landlords. And what, what, what do you it, make it's of? not going to hit landlords, is it? Because what's going to happen to rent? Well, the rent's going to go up. The landlord's going to pass it on to the, 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 the tenants. Of course they are. Um, I, I'm not, I actually sort of don't mind that because if you don't pay council tax, so let's just say, look, um, some tenants have a habit of not paying council tax. Now, we were actually, <clears throat> I was having a meeting the other day with a bailiff, right? This right. is true. No, he wasn't after me, by, by the way. <laughs> he knocked on the door. He knocked on my door and we had a little chat. <laughs> no. Um, no, I was actually having a meeting with a bailiff the other day and the biggest collection they do is for council tax. It's for people that are in council tax arrears. And that's where tenants obviously are not paying their council tax. Now, the properties get a black mark against the name. And who suffers from that? The property owner. Have you ever suffered from that? No. Has anyone here ever suffered from that? No. It doesn't sound like a massive problem, well, no, but no, carry but on. It is a massive problem. <laughs> because it's, I wouldn't want my property being blacklisted as, as owing council tax. Is, are you sure about that? I'm not sure it's an official thing, but it does def- I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want that tag. So the um, if the tenants are not paying the council tax, I don't think that, I don't think that's correct. It may not be, but I just still wouldn't want it. Might it. not be, but I just made I it. I just up. wouldn't want it. No, I wouldn't want it. <laughs> I wouldn't want my property had been uh, in in some sort of blacklist, whatever, as owing council tax because sometimes it's you're talking thousands and thousands of pounds, mm-hmm. and the problem is if that tenant then leaves. The debt is always it's with it's with a tenant, yeah, but it's it also with the property. No, it isn't. It will they will still come to that property. They won't. According to this bailiff, they will still come to that property. Because what they'll they might until, go to the until, property, until, yeah. yeah. Then they'll so, go. Sorry, right, that fine. tenant's gone. They'll go. Oh. But it could still cause problems for the people that move, they move into it because yeah, they've maybe. got bailiffs knocking the door, all sorts, and it's not nice. Well, do you want to know something interesting? Yeah, I just had a letter come to the door because I wasn't paying my council tax. Yeah. That's why that looks. See, that's right. why. Uh, because yeah. I'd moved house. Yeah. And I, I'd forgotten to, to let that. I'd forgotten to. It's the same council. I'd forgotten to council the one, and 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 set it up on the other on the other house. You're a bit of bit of a nightmare for not changing addresses, aren't you? I, I'm not very organised when it comes to uh, stuff. Hmm. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So they they rang me up. Well, I had this letter through, and because I've been away a lot, been travelling a lot, I opened the post. Wait, 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 hang about. What? Where have you been travelling? What do you mean? Oh, wait, have you been travelling? We, we were doing events all the time. Oh, okay, I thought you meant abroad. Oh, no, sorry, you lost your passport. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is a true story. I was meant to go away with Alastair last week, and he, we met, agreed to meet at the airport at three. We were, going, we were going to Barcelona, and I rang him at one. I was like, I can't find my passport. I'm sure I'll find it. But, and then I, I still haven't found it. I couldn't go. It cost me Sorry. thousands, but whatever. Yeah, um, whatever. So that was really annoying. Yeah, I, I'm not very good at stuff, remember. Um, so, yeah, so I rang them up. I they got like a court date come through for it for me. And I was, I rang them, I was, oh, I'm really sorry. I actually have been paying it just to the wrong house. And they were like, oh, yeah, and they just changed it over. It was fine. Uh, but what yeah. my point is, is that they came after me. And what happened was they originally went after the old tenant. And they were like, no, no, no. It's Russell Leeds that lives right. there now. And then they came after me. And it wasn't after the house. It was definitely after... After me, yeah. I mean, that, the, the bailiff. That's not what he. That he. Uh, but how comes what, after you? Yeah. But they'll always keep going back to that house until you can prove. Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. But let me, tell, not, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Because yeah. you said that the, the only thing will change is you'll put the rent up, mm-hmm. which is true. Yeah, the, the landlords will do that. However, do you know when you got one of those annoying tenants that doesn't pay? <coughs> Suddenly, yeah. you're now losing your rent and you're having to pay out. You know, yeah, that's like, true money for your council tax. It does seem that no matter what happens, the, the, the government are trying to always find a stick to batter tenant uh, landlords. Yeah. They're always trying to find that stick and it gets so, bigger and bigger every time. <coughs> so I don't think it's a great, th- but let's just, let's just hope that it doesn't, it doesn't come in. But there you go. That, um, I don't know what your thoughts are. If you've got thoughts, please comment. If you watch this on YouTube, please comment below. Yeah. Let us know what, what you think of this or if you've got any more insight into this. But a bit of a depressing, well, it's like the news in general, isn't it? I the suppose. news is terrible. It's always depressing. But, so. uh, yeah, so a bit um, of a, I wouldn't, Anyway, we're going to lift your spirits now with this. (laughs) 
Right, so it's now time for the questions and answers. Unlike usual, we're not going to be reading them from our phones. We're going to be asking nope. our beautiful live audience that are here with us today. So, does anyone have a question? Yes. Stand up, please. So, when trying to uh, stack a deal, and I want this answer for a HMO and a service accommodation. Man, you're getting your money's worth. Well. Yeah, exactly. What kind of price are you looking at to refurb it? So, from a HMO perspective, how much to put a bed, a wardrobe, uh, drawers, right. and curtains, and things like that, lampshade? Um, how much do you do you associate in your head when you're looking at a deal? And the same with the service accommodation as well. So obviously there's a living room and stuff associated with that as well. So what kind of numbers are you are you based on to do a rough figure in here? Can I go with this? Um, I've just done it. <coughs> I've just done it in my, one of my HMOs. Keep talking just, this mic. Oh, this mic, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to have my back to you, sorry. Um, love you, man. Right, listen, um, I've just done it with a four-bed HMO in Hull. Uh, it cost just under £5,000 to fully furnish that place, dress the place, it's and that's right. including all the cutlery, Bedding, things like a little nice like towel holders. Do you know all the just the, the I stuff? I can tell that you like the finishing touches. Yeah. Things like uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't do it. You know, I, know. I have no idea things about like, doing uh, that. Uh, but light shades, yeah, light shades. Do you know everyone forgets light shades? <laughs> it's true. And yeah, they're a fiver, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you forgot that off your budget, it's not the end of the world. Is no, it? it's not the end of the world. But everyone forgets some. People forget cutlery when they're doing HMOs, and they only put like two, like the bare minimum of plates in. Always put doubles. Um, but yeah, yeah, about five grand for a HMO, a four bed HMO. Um, every room is approximately five, five, five hundred to six hundred pounds, depending on what quality furniture you're going for. Um, and I wouldn't be buying your furniture. Lease it. It's the most tax efficient way to do it. So don't buy, um, lease it, because then you can have it as an expense. Do you, do you know any companies that offer leasing furniture? Absolutely. Who? So Better Source, we do this. Huh? We do this on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a guy that specializes in furnishing and dressing properties. Um, service accommodation um, is around about the same, but it depends how many bedrooms there is. So again, go buy the, go buy the five to six hundred, whoa. Go buy the five to six hundred pounds um, per room. Um, but it depends how high end you want to go. Oh, I think um, service accommodation, is, I was going to say, is a bit is a very different actually. Yeah. Because it could be a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. It could be an eight bedroom, you know, yeah. B and B start. So how can you really gauge that? So they, they should say it's I don't know a two bed apartment. What I, what I would say is that service for me yeah. is service accommodation. You want to be higher end yeah. than your HMO. <laughs> you want it to look nicer. You want to have things like oh, you know. Uh, Light shades and uh, <laughs> things like that, you know. Do you know, do you know, with a HMO, you want hard wearing everything. Hard wearing furniture, hard wearing beds. Um, <laughs> and actually in service accommodation, you want hard wearing beds as well. Yeah. Um, I, I had, do you know, my, my service accommodation was up for a month and they broke two of the beds. Man, it's like, I don't know what they were doing. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, was it you? <laughs> but you did stay there, actually. <laughs> Cheers, man. No, when I said when I said that it was already broken, I can assure you. Yeah, yeah, no, you did. Um, so yeah, man, I hope that answers your question. Cheers, Brilliant. Man. Cheers, Glenn. Give my hand. Uh, your hand is the highest. Please stand up. We'll get uh, and you. it was waving, so that's good. Hand high and waving. Hello. Hello. Um, my name's Sean. If you have a compliant rent to rent business yeah. and you find a lot of deals that you obviously perhaps can't afford to take them all on yourself, so you want to sell it on, actually I can sell it on, do you need to have a separate sourcing company or can, can you already as a compliant rent to renter just sell that one and no. not, not have to have a separate? No, can't do it because the compliance is different for each company. So you have to have a separate company set up for a sourcing. Um, so the compliance for rent to rent is not the same as the compliance for deal sourcing. But could you have a company that was compliant for both? You could, um, yeah you could, but you'd have to have additional compliance. So the question was, um, you've got a compliant rent to rent business, yeah. um, but that's not that doesn't mean it's compliant for deal sourcing. No, so you'd have to add things to it. Yeah, so you could, could do, that. do that rather than, I think my point is, do you want to tell you why you do want two separate? companies? Do you want to tell you why you do separate? Companies. You do want two companies. Do you want to tell you why? If you sell a deal and it goes terribly wrong and they sue you or something, you yeah. don't want to take down your rent to rent business at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So you want to keep that's why it's a that's why it's a limited company. Limit, so you want to keep them you want to keep them separate. Yeah. I would always keep them separate. Yeah, yeah always. But that means learning to, you know,
But if you're going to do two things, you need to learn two things anyway. Of course, I'm not saying that, but if you're going, if you're really focusing on one strategy, it's taking your time to learn that, but you're seeing all these deals that maybe people want off you to then go and be an actual deal sourcer and, and be someone who's good at that. I don't want to just be cowboying things all around the place, then, you know? I'm sorry, you're going to have to do it properly. There's no two ways about it. Um, if you want to do it, do it properly. Um, there's too many cowboy deal sources in the country yeah, that's and I don't want you to become one of them. <laughs> um, please don't. Um, so just do it properly from the offset. If you do yeah. it properly, you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah. But, but the fact that you're asking these questions and the way, the way that you're conducting yourself right yeah. now, I've got no doubt that you would do that anyway Absolutely. and you know about it. So, yeah. so you just, just do it, get two companies if you want. Or just think, you know what? It's not worth selling with another company to make the odd two and a half grand. It, it depends, how many are you thinking you're going to sell? Well, it's really that because I'm specialising in rent to rent, you do see a lot of deals. And being at the beginning, <coughs> let's say you find four deals, which can happen yeah. because you go and view a lot of properties, you put a lot of offers on the table. Happy days, four deals come back to you. You don't have the finances for those four deals. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of people out there that maybe want to buy a deal off you. But I don't necessarily want to be setting up a deal sourcing business at the same time. Okay. Do you want me to tell you, do you want me to give you some advice? Something that I've learned over the last few years. As entrepreneurs, and I would say most people that are here will probably would consider yourself as an entrepreneur, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? People that want, you know, want to be able to make money. We, we, we don't like leaving money on the table. We see opportunities like this and we're like, oh, I could be selling these, I could be doing yeah. that. And for me, when I started very much, that was the case. It was, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Hey, I could manage properties, I could do bam, 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 I could do this. And uh, yeah, but what you actually find <coughs> is, is that it often helps to focus on something. So for me, I've even though some of my companies, like we, we, would, we had a deal sourcing company and it was making like 30 grand a month and we just closed it down because it was taking our time and energy away from the stuff we actually wanted to do. And it was a case of it's not worth it for us. Um, and we passed all our leads over to Alastair, who was also doing the same thing. So sometimes it, it is okay to leave money on the table. And sometimes if it's going to distract you from doing what you actually should be doing and what your what your mission is and what your goal is, <coughs> it's best just to put all your focus into that. I'm not, it's not always the case. I, I'm not saying be stupid. There are times when you want, when it makes sense to monopolize it. But... For me, quite often, if, if you're not, not sure, and, oh, I don't know if I can be, then it's best just to not do it and just focus on what you want to do. Does that make sense? Can, can I just quickly say something as well? So your, your main business is rent to rent. Yeah. <clears throat> Why don't you flip it around and make your main business deal sourcing? And then have the rent to rent as a subsidiary from the deal sourcing. So you're out finding rent to rent deals, you've said. Yeah. So why don't you set up a deal sourcing compliant business? You're out, you've just said you found four deals. Sell three for two, three thousand pounds. Keep one yourself. But that's so the minute. Two separate companies. Yeah, they're two separate companies. But what I would say is you, you're focusing on the rent to rent at the minute. So why don't you focus on the deal sourcing? Because that's going to generate you. It's going to generate you more money. There's no two ways about it. I love rent to rent. I love rent to rent service accommodation. Um, typically, a rent to rent service accommodation might make you a thousand pound a month. Like I know there's people out there making crazy money. There's also people out there only making four hundred pound a month. I'm so actually paying to rent HMO. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how much is it going to make a month? Um, on average, seven hundred to one thousand cash flow per okay. property. Cash flow per property. So it's a little bit passive, but if you go active income and you sell one deal a month, that's three grand a month. Yeah, but you might not want to do that. You might not want what to. Do do that. Want to just, do? What do you want to well, do? The thing is, I um, I actually live in the Canary Islands and I've come here for the summer okay. to set this business up. So. I suppose. Do you know what? I, I, I would. I, I would even bother with the deal sourcing at all, mm. personally. If yeah. you live in the Canaries and you're looking for passive income, rent to rent. If you're looking to build up a pot of money, deal source, and then use that money to build passive income. Yeah. That's exactly what I done. Um, so it just depends what you want out of this. Yeah, I suppose just that I live abroad. Or, sense me to have or a team up with a deal sourcer and say, hey, I've got these brilliant deals. If you sell them, can you give me a, uh, you know, give me a fee for, for passing them your way? And then you haven't got yeah. all the hassle of setting up the so compliance. Sell it to a door, uh, door <laughs> not, sell it, <laughs> not sell it to a deal store. A lower rate. Not sell it, just let them sell it on and let them give you a cut. Right. And then you haven't got to have the hassle then. You've got, then it's just a conversation with a deal source and you can agree a joint venture. Then you haven't got to do all the, all the crap. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Give her a hand.
Uh, uh, this lady, sorry, this, uh, she was waving her hands and she was like, looked really energetic. So. Sorry, I couldn't see you got your back to me. Yeah, that's, why, that's, that's why I uh, butted in, sorry, ma'am. Sorry, bro. Hi, thanks. Hey, hey. Um, so, the only areas I keep hearing is Wolverhampton Hall, Wolverhampton Hall. Could you, would you be able to give me six areas that you have invested in? No, we only invest in Wolverhampton and Hall. <laughs> Six areas that we invested that or my... Have, you currently have invested in properties... Me or areas. my investors I deal with, because I deal with thousands of investors. Or just any, you know, six areas that you think are the best for buying and renting out. What strategy? Um, HMOs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, Doncaster. Yeah. Do you want to write this down? Uh, yeah, or is it in the podcast? It will be on the podcast. Because that's what we're filming. Um, <laughs> In other words, because you just watch it next week. Right, okay, so you don't have to write it down then. Doncaster, okay. Sunderland, Gainsborough, Lincoln, Manchester, Salford. Oh, wait, wait. See? It's going to be in the podcast. Sorry. Oh. Okay, oh, I can't remember now. Right, okay, Gainsborough. Gainsborough. Lincoln. Lincoln. Um, some parts of Preston, but very, yes. only, only some parts. Um, Liverpool, very good. Um, how many about? How many about? Have I done more than six? Uh, okay, so um, <laughs> Kettering, Corby, Peterborough. Who do you want to buy in Corby? Corby's good, man, for HMOs. Is it? Um, no, uh, I, 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 um, I don't worry too much about South because. The ROI goes, it, it drops instantly. But there is like some places right down, so like Southampton places are good, some places in Brighton, but the prices, you, your ROI is gonna drop. So it, it's all about what you're comfortable with. I um, can probably add two as well. You wanna write it down? Wolverhampton, Hull. <laughs> Did you get Hull and Wolverhampton? I got it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. No Give her a hand. Anyone else? Uh, the guy just at the very back, right in front of you, Ben. Um, I wanted to ask, you mentioned having two companies, right? One for deal sourcing and one maybe for property overall. Yeah. Um, as you said, it's best because if they sue you to the ground, your properties don't go yes. bust, right? Now, the thing is, what if you want to uh, be a deal sourcer in order to actually fund the deposit for your property and everything that okay. you can't really... How do you transfer the funds in between Direct the companies? companies? Loans. So you do a loan between company to company. You um, can do that with your own company. Yeah, you need to speak to an accountant. Um, we can't give accountancy advice, but speak to your accountant because it's very possible. It's very, very possible. Thank you. Uh, the guy just in front of you. I thought you were going to say, we can't give accountancy advice, but, and I was expecting something, but speak to your accountant. No, we, we, we can because if, if we give you the wrong, wrong advice and you go out and do it, uh, I'd rather go and get professional Especially advice. as it's been filmed. <laughs> yeah, and especially because I'm not an accountant. Yes, sir. Hi, guys. Uh, so I recently went to the crash course. Cool. Uh, Woo! Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did, yeah. Cool, I'm glad you said that. I paid people to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, I want to take action, so I've been chasing lease option agreements. Can you hold the mic? Sorry. Mic. I've been chasing lease option agreements because yeah. uh, I'm a recent graduate. Um, what I was quite surprised with is that a lot of vendors seem to know what lease option agreements are. Which yeah. I was quite surprised about. Is that just my experience? I mean, I've only talked to it. Depends. Where, where, you, where are you getting the leads from? Uh, I've been looking at Sunderland. No, no, where are you getting the leads oh, from? Oh, uh, so I've been looking Forget at... Forget the area. Where, so, the... right move, filtering by all this, going okay. on Gumtree, contacting vendors directly. Uh, how are you contacting them? Uh, they've got their number on Gumtree. So you, you, just yeah. literally giving so them So, it, it's because you're probably the 50th person that's called them. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's the reality. So, is that um, specifically for Gumtree, then, the issue? Or, like, I'm guessing no, right no. move won't be like that, will it? I don't no. know. I don't know. I don't think so. Right move, um, I've... Very few people know what it is. I was going to say, I, I don't have many. I haven't come across that personally. Um, so, okay. uh, maybe how on Gumtree. How many of you found that, know that, that, that are going, oh yeah, lease option, one of those. So, literally, um, so I think I went to the crash course, was it two weeks ago, the last one? I, I think. think. Well, that's we, we went there. Right, yeah, so, uh, about 20. So you've had 20, 20 responses. 20 people that have all gone, oh, 
one of those classic old lease options. I mean, not those words, but they're, you know, rent to buy or anything like that. Rent to buy. Rent to buy is slightly different. Um, okay, so how are you approaching them? You're phoning them up. Yeah. And ha- tell me how you're speaking to them. Let's do it now. Come you on, what, about what's... Local. what's Hold, hold, on. hold the mic uh, right to your mouth. Stop moving your mic. Hold the mic right to your mouth. Yeah. What, what would you... When hold you on, phone them on, up... On, on, on. Yeah. Right, you're, you're, the, you're the landlord. Right. Right. You're, do you phone them or do they phone you back? Uh, both. <laughs> As in, I call them sometimes, I leave a voicemail, okay. they call me back. Shoot, you, want me to, you want me to call? You call, okay, yeah. you call us there, okay? So, right, right, we're going to play this now, it's going to be great. You're going to rock this. Yeah, let me just put my glass of wine down. Okay. Okay. How many of you have been to the crash course? Most of you. Should we give them a power move, then? You know what that is, yeah? yeah? Are you ready? What's your name? Uh, is. Is. Is that? Is. Oh, is that? <laughs> is that? <laughs> is it? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> get over there. Do you get that a lot? So, What's your name? Is it? Is it? Yeah, quite a bit. So, Ro- right. so Ross, am I am I playing hard to get or what do you think? This isn't a date, mate. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> unless you want it to be. I mean, you guys want to no, 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 no. afterwards. Do you, do you want me to be an easy going landlord or a hard going landlord? Do you want me to be easy or hard to get? Easy or hard going? Oh. What do you guys want? Oh. Hard going. You want it to be hard? Sorry, man. Are you hard? <laughs> <laughs> Are you hard? <sighs> Move on. Come on. Pick the phone up. Uh, hello. Hold on, you're ringing here. Well, I'm ringing him, so <laughs> ring, 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 ring. By the way, by hard to get, he doesn't mean you're not going to answer the phone to him. <laughs> I, I never answer my phone in the first ring. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ring, ring. Hello. Uh, oh, hi there. Uh, I've just come across your property on Gumtree. Uh, okay. I was just hoping to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, uh, could you just tell me a little bit about the property? Well, you've seen it on right roof, or you've seen it on country. Sure, but uh, more to do with the condition. I couldn't see clearly from the picture. Okay. Uh, Sorry, yeah. Would you be a dick at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I, I fall into the rules so well. Right, start again. Come on. I'll well, be well, a bit like, easier well, on I you. Like, though, right? I like You were like, hello? And then he was like, oh, really friendly, which I've never heard you answer the phone like that to me ever before. <laughs> he actually just goes like this. You know what I mean? That's how he always answers. No, I, I go, your man. <laughs> Maybe, your man, your man. But then, as soon as he was like, I'm interested in probably on Gumtree, you were like, mm-hmm. right, okay. Like, why would you Come do on that? then, let's go. All right. uh, ring, ring. <laughs> Hello. Uh, oh, hi there, I've just come across your property on Gumtree. Oh, that's it's amazing. amazing, thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about it? That's absolutely no problem at all. Okay, uh, could you tell me a little bit about the property, please? Yeah, it's a three bed terrace. Okay. It's in good condition. Nice. Uh, however, um, the back fence has fallen down. Okay. Uh, would you say that's the only issue with the property, or is there more work that needs to be done? Uh, there's a bit of damp upstairs and downstairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you received many offers on the property? Um, yeah, I keep getting these people ringing me up, like offering me like silly low market value deals, and I'm not, I'm not really that into it. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I'm not into making cheeky offers either, so... That's cool, man. Uh, I'm just looking to sell my habits. How can you help? Okay, uh, so my name's Is it? Uh, I'm a property... Is it? Is it? Okay. <laughs> like, is it? Is it? <laughs> is it? Is it? Cool, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking to buy a few properties in the area. Um, okay. And I really like... Oh, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's £70,000. Just pay me the money and you can have it. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well... <laughs> I, I need to do a few comparables if that's alright, so do you mind if I ask you a couple of financial questions on the property? Um, yeah, okay, they're not too personal. Okay, uh, uh, how, so how much are you looking to get for this property? Is it around 56,000 I think it's listed for? Oh, I just thought you 70. Oh, sorry, 70,000 it's listed for. Yeah. Okay, uh, do you have any idea how much it's renting out for at the moment? Uh, no, I live here, so I, I don't know how much it rents out for, I'm sorry. Okay, um, okay, uh, what, what's the motivation for selling if you don't mind me asking? just looking to sell my house, I want to move on. My wife cheated on me, so I'm just like, I um, found out she was sleeping with my, my uh, neighbor. So I just, you know, <laughs> not really, by the way. If you're watching this. I was gonna say, I'm not your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Nick cut. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, come on, man, let's go. Okay, so uh, have you thought about renting instead of selling it? Or? Uh, no, I, I just want to get rid of it because uh, I don't want this property anymore. Okay. Um, 
In that case, obviously the money you're, it's not the capital that you're you're essentially looking for. I didn't say that. I said what sum I have. Okay. Um, okay. Well, uh, what's the absolute lowest price that you'd be willing to accept? In I think we've already point? had discussion. Discussion. Is it so? You're, you're seventy thousand. Yeah, I can't, I can't take any more because it's not. It's worth seventy thousand. So, um, you know what? I don't, I don't want to take any more than that. Okay. Um, Are you in a position to buy it? Uh, well, I'm definitely interested in property, but I think the market needs some time to recover. Okay. Um, so, would you be willing to say, uh, I'd be willing to make the pur uh, purchase price offer in, say, five years' time, and in the meantime, I'd be willing to uh, pay, pay you the mortgage payments every month uh, and manage the property myself, find the tenants, and essentially take the hassle off you for the property. Ah, is that a classic lease option agreement? <laughs> 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 Man, give it up for this guy. That's pretty awesome. Um, listen, that's good. That, that's really good. Um, I, I would do a bit more. I would actually go and view the property before you do that script uh, I, and get in front of the guy um, and do a little bit of DD. But that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, but when, when, when the guys, just give that guy the mic back. Um, when, 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 you, when you have this conversation in real, are they genuinely saying to you they know what lease options are? Uh, not, not, well, not the lease options, but when, when I t mentioned that kind the, of the rent, rent, rent to buy scheme, yeah, 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 yeah. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not interested in. Yeah, in see, I, I find, look, the scripts are good. I, 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 they, they've always worked for me. Do, do, do you know what, though, he didn't really do as part of the script? Yeah. Is, I, don't, I don't think he got to the situation where he, where he exhausted the options and no. realised that you actually might be interested in doing a lease yeah. option. You, you kind of asked a couple of the questions, but you didn't go. So I think you need to be more natural. Yeah. I think I think you sound, I mean, it might be that you're, in all fairness, that you're doing it to Alastair Cunningham, <laughs> the Alastair Cunningham, <laughs> in front of a, you know 150 people yeah. and getting filmed, in fairness. But you sounded to me a little bit um, nervous like you didn't even know what was going to come next so yeah. i would just say just be like really super relaxed about it yeah and don't worry too much about whether you get it or not yeah. you basically all you're trying to find out if you go in with this mindset i think it makes a big difference don't go in the mindset of i want to get a lease option agreement go in with the mindset of i want to find out why they want to sell their house and if a lease option is an option then great and so you don't rush for that point at all. You can just sort of, oh, okay, awesome. So you look at what, so what, what are you planning on doing? Are you planning on moving on? Or, yeah. a lot, most people are trying to sell their house to buy another house. Yeah. Right? That's what most, and, and from your, I couldn't tell where, I didn't know what your plan was because you hadn't got there. But if they're doing that, there's no point really even mentioning a lease option <clears> because this is just not going to work for them. So you're looking for someone who's trying to sell their house because it was an inheritance property yeah. or because um, they bought it as an investment property and it's not making them any money and they want to get rid of it or something along along those lines. So it's yeah. really important that you just focus on exhausting, exhausting the options, find out where they're at, find out what they want. Um, yeah. It's the first rule of sales, isn't it? You need to find out what they want and then yeah. you give it to them. Yeah. Um, so just be really super relaxed about it. Don't try and sell it to them. Don't try and get on the script straight away. I know the script's there for a reason, but you need to exhaust the options first. That yeah. makes sense. Do you know, do you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my biggest tip I'll give anyone for lease options? Yeah. That person has to know, like, and trust you, right? So don't, don't try and do anything until you've got that, until you've got that, that some sort of trust from them that you're not going to rip them off. Now remember, lease options are that. Yeah. What, a little A5 notebook? No, they're that. They're a blank bit of paper. It's got lines on. <laughs> see, do you see what I've got to put up with? Right, listen, they're a blank, it's a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. So whenever you're doing it, it should always be so that it works for you and it works for them. It should never just work for you, never. It okay. should always be work for you, work for them. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. No, really but just cool. get, get used to the script, yeah. get a bit more confident at it, and just keep plugging because it will come. And yeah. just be yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just be, yeah, just be natural. Don't be worried. Don't be just be asking genuine questions yeah. and find out what they want. <coughs> Guys, I know. Sorry, sorry, I don't want to keep you. I know you said not to go through real estate agents to be for lease option agreements, but is it worth being, you know, contacting an agent and being like, let's sit down. This is what I'm looking for. Listen, you do it. Please let us know the results. The work. Sure. We'll okay. we'll, uh, we'll love to hear. Thanks a lot. Cheers, nice. man. Thank you. Cheers. Should we go? Okay. We'll come over to this side in a minute because this side's not been getting many questions. Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes there. Okay. Hey. What advice would you give to a six year old like me that wants to start in the property industry?
to a 16 year old that wants to get involved in property, what advice would I give? I would say you've got a lot of time to educate yourself. You've been on the crash course yet? Get on the crash course, start yeah. reading books. Um, there's so much. Start hanging around people, going to the networking events, hanging around people that are doing it. They say, don't they, that you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. Uh, I actually talked about this on, la on last week's show, but I'll, I'll mention it again. I've got a live audience here. But one of the interesting things about that, you all know that saying, yeah? Um, you are the sum of the five people you hang around. It was Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn that said that. Okay. And you, you, we always think that that means like your best mates and, and mm -hmm. people you're physically with. But we live in like a social world where you can hang out with people, maybe not even physically. Samuel does a YouTube video every single day. Yeah. You can watch that and you're kind of hanging out with Samuel. You can watch the podcast, you kind of hang out with us. So I'd say put yourself in the right environment. Environment is key. Re read the books, learn, you know. Um, you're 16, you probably won't do any deals right now, but Samuel started when he was set, bought his first house when he was 17. So I would spend time now and, and then just start taking action. Yeah. And you've got, you, go on. Oh, sorry. Like no, no, no. Do you know what's brilliant, right? Is I, I think, is anyone here younger than 16? Okay, so the young, youngest person in the room. We didn't give her a clap, we gave this guy a clap. <laughs> You're 18, yeah. Um, well. So what's brilliant is I can, I, I, I'll, I bet by a show of hands, who wishes that they were 16 and knew what they knew now? Yeah, all right? So most people you in this room- You could have just stopped who wishes they were 16. <laughs> most people in this room wishes they knew what they knew now then. So educate. You need to get out there and you need to educate and start hanging around with people that are successful and start hanging around with people that are doing it and don't care what your friends think. Ditch them, get rid of them. If you've got negative people around you, get them out, get them out of your life. Start hanging around with positive people and just get out there and educate. Get along to all the free events, crash course, everything and start educating because if you're wanting to do this now at 16, imagine what you're gonna be like at 20. You're a powerful lady, get out there and start learning. Uh, yes, this lady waving. Hey. Hi, my name is Julia. So, did you invest in other countries as well, or only in the UK? So, and if you didn't, in which countries will you invest? We did talk a little, we, we, we actually haven't, to be fair, have we? Have <laughs> no. you invested in Scotland at all? No, why would you? <laughs> um, so we actually, have, however, we, we did talk about this. Um, we looked at some of the best places in Europe to invest. I'm trying to remember, did, there was, yeah. was it Portugal, I remember, was one of them. Um, no, no, do you know the best place in Europe to, or the best place outside England to invest? Go on. Dublin. It's Dublin and in value every year. Oh. <laughs> it is actually Dublin. Dublin is actually one of the best places. You've done that joke on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, when I did it, it was funny. <laughs> hey, it was funny. So the answer to your question, I'm sorry, is no. Um, we, we don't at the minute. Um, but after our recent trip to America, with, I was out in America with Samuel, um, there's a lot of possibilities out there. I saw that, yeah. There is a lot, a lot. Um, so I potentially will be investing in America in the next sort of five years. What about you? Like, I'm thinking Germany is full of... See, I like Germany. Yeah, I do as well. I like, we, might, we, get people, we get people that come to the crash course from Germany that apply these strategies over in, over in Germany. Uh, I've got family over in Germany as well. So Germany would be somewhere I would potentially look at, for yeah. sure. I see myself as an immigrant, kind of. So I know a lot of people going to Germany. If they're not coming in UK, they're going to Germany. So I think it's a good market there. Yeah. It's good market um, there. Interestingly, a lot of <laughs> I deal with a lot of overseas investors, and they're not in, they're not investing in their own countries. They want to invest in the UK. Um, I'm one of them. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't know why, um, but they're not comfortable investing in their own countries at the minute. So they want to invest in the UK because they see it as a booming market. I think it is. I yeah, think the UK is a brilliant uh, market. Especially Chinese and, uh, and Asian investors, they love the UK at the minute. They love it. Uh, I've got more Chinese investors buying off me at the minute than ever. So. Hope that helps. Thank you for your question. Thank Give you. her a hand. <laughs> Anyone else from this side? Um, the guy doing that. Aren't they all doing that? Oh, no. Just two fingers up. You've got two. F yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. The guy behind you. We'll do you next. <laughs> Did everyone just change? To yeah, that? yeah, yeah. The guy I'm doing that. The guy that's standing up. Hey, man. How are you? Hi. Uh, Hi. So, uh, quick question. In 
when you are, so you talked about having investors and you know people that can buy properties of you. So when you're just starting, how do you actually invite people to invest with you to allow you to scale? And also, if you have a let's say like a full time job where you're getting paid and your returns from your investment is not making enough money, I mean, at what point do you make the break, or would it be worth your while to sort of switch? Well, we we talked about this about leaving your job. Yeah. At what point you do it? And we actually disagreed. Didn't we? Yeah, we kind we did, of yeah. we disagreed really. So what I think you should do um, is I think you should stay in, in your as long as you as long as you don't hate your if you hate your job, it's making you depressed. Then get out of it. As long as your job is okay, I think do it in your spare time, build the income up, and then slowly cut your hours down until that has replaced your job, and then and then leave. Alastair thinks that you should just. Um, if you if you've made a decision that you want to invest in property, just quit your job and just go for it, and that's what he I, did. I need to explain that, law. Right. If uh, so, did you just stand up, man. Um, right. What was your? Remember talking to this. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to lean in, but I like to look. Um, so, what was? What do you want to do with with your business? What are you doing with? What do you want to do with property? Um. So, just to help me retire. Right. Okay. So, have you got any investment properties? Yes. I have many. Um, free. Okay, so you're already on your way. So how much? What passive income do you get from them? Pro the investment properties. Roughly. About maybe seventy, like gross. Okay, so how much do you get per month? About three and a half grand. Right. Okay. What do you do for a living? I, I'm an IT contractor. Right. Okay. So you earn decent money. Could that three and a half grand make? Could you survive on three and a half grand? Yes. Right. Okay, so you are in a position where you could leave your job. But I, I get way more per month. That's fine. Yeah. That's, not, that's not what I'm asking. Uh, yes, yes. Can you, could you survive on three and a half grand a month? Yes. Right, so you could leave your job. Yes. Right. Now, do you know what will happen when you leave your job? How many hours do you work? Um, 40 hours a week. Okay, so part time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, okay, so look, when you leave your job, you're going to suddenly get all this free time and use that free time wisely. So like when I, when I was looking to get in property, I hated what I was doing and I know I'm going to be successful. I, it's in here. I have a burning desire in here that I am going to be successful no matter what happens. I wrote a book called Whatever It Takes because I'm going to do whatever it takes. Yeah? So if you have that burning desire and your job is holding you back, leave your job. I truly believe that if you genuinely believe you're going to make this. If you're half-hearted at it, you're only going to get half-hearted results. If you're fully committed, you're going to get fully committed results. It's not for everybody leaving the job because some people aren't fully committed. They tell themselves they are, but they're not. Because when the shit hit the, hits the fan, are you still going to be committed or are you going to be crawling back to your job? What, what is it? I, I'll, I'll be committed, so. so. If you're a contractor, can you just knock your down, work down a bit? Do less hours, do... 30 hours a week. Yes, yes, again. There's ways around everything. If you genuinely want to do this, you will do it. You'll find a way. You'll either find, do you know, successful people have reasons or results. They don't have both. So if you, if you genuinely want to do this and you genuinely want to kill it in property, you will find a way. And if that means only working two days a week in your IT contractor and having three days in property, then you will. So when I first started, I, I, I gradually done it and then I, bang, done. I went down, I, I gave myself a couple of days and then that's it, I killed it, I killed the job off. As soon as I started making them, literally, um, I, I sold my, my first deal and I'm like, I made more money in two days than I, hold, I did in the whole month. Suddenly now I'm, make, I'm selling 12 to 15 deals a month, making 30 to 40,000 pound a month. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had a job. How important is your job to you, man? Because at the minute, all you're doing is you're making somebody else rich. Sure. That's my belief. It might not. You might not agree with that. I, I don't. To, I don't totally agree. With that. So, See, he doesn't agree. But do you know what? It doesn't matter. It's my belief. You can, listen, you can listen. Let, to let me tell you why I don't totally agree. I mean, it depends on what you want to do, right? But a lot of people love their job. Yeah. Right. So if you love your job and you, you I mean, you, you're already financially free because you could live off three and a half grand a month, and you're getting that passive income anyway. So it depends on what you want to do. If you love being an IT contractor, yeah. then do that. Yeah, but that's different. That's, if you love your job, that's brilliant. I, yeah. I do you love your job? Uh, yeah, I love it. Well, do it then. then. That's fine. Do if that. that's what you want to do, do it. But if you're going to use your job as an excuse for not being successful in property when you want to be successful but he, but in property. But he is successful in property. I know he is. I'm not saying he's not. I'm not saying he's not. But I'm talking about people in general. I hear this all the time. People in general blaming the job for the lack of success. 
and it is. Yeah, but okay. Not you. I'm just. I mean, in general, I get out a lot. If you love your job um, and you enjoy what you do, then do that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the advice that Alastair just gave you was to go and set up a deal set selling business, which is guess what? Not everyone's cup of tea. It's another job. Mm. A job that you might not like doing. You're gonna want to. You're gonna. We're designed to work. That's what we're designed to do. I put, well, yeah, some people would like to go and sit on a beach. I, I, I want to work. I want to do a job. So if you enjoy what you do, it's important that you enjoy what you do because that's what you spend most of your time doing. If you love being mm. an IT contractor, do that. Do property on the side as an investment. That's fine. It just or depends if you want to do, do less hours and do more in property because you love that as well, then do that. But you can't really, you can't really go wrong. But I, would, I never would push someone to leave their job and say, you're making someone else rich. Like, like you know. I don't know. I need to just say that, but I, I don't. No, be, look, I don't believe. Not, I don't I believe this, that. It's not for everybody. Um, but do you know what? I, I get so many people messaging me and saying, "Look, they're stuck in a dead end job." Then, then, um, and it's like, yeah, uh, it's so frustrating because they, they're complaining they're working sixty, seven hours a week, but then they haven't got. They don't give themselves the the, the time to 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 uh, develop their own business, and it's it's actually really depressing um, because the reality is. Not, I'm not, and I'm not referring to you, I'm just referring to a lot of the messages, my experience. The, the, the people, all they're doing is they're working a job and they're not working on their business. I was always told, mind your own business as opposed to somebody else's business. So, look, I, I'm not referring to you. Um, if you love your job, man, I, I really love that. I hated my job. I hated it. And to be in a position where you love your job is phenomenal. So the answer to your question is, yes, leave your job and stay in your job at the same time. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Give him a hand! Okay, one last one, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna, we're gonna have to move on. One last one. Uh, come on, we're gonna give it to the most excited. excited. Come on, man. This is the last one. Oh, she's very excited. Should we? <laughs> yeah, go on, stand up, stand up. Sorry, guys, she was just more excited than you. This better be a good one now, though. The pressure is, because they want it. They want it, the question, go on. Um, hi guys, I'm Aloha. Hello, Aloha. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so it's about service accommodation in London. Is there any way to get around the 30 day rule? Because I know for a fact there's so many people who are doing it in London. I'm thinking. Well, I've got brilliant news for you straight off. Do you know the 30 day rule? It's a 90 day rule. So yeah. You're already three times better off than you were a second ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 90 day rule, it's not 30 days. Yeah. So, woo! That's not, that's not better. It is, it's three it is times better. better. It means you can have a service combination for 90 days as opposed to 30 days. Oh! Ah, I clicked. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay, that. Is there a way to get around it? Because I, I... Yes, two ways. There's a legal way and an, an illegal way. <laughs> which do which you want to hear? The legal way. The legal way. The legal way is harder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tell you the legal way when the camera's cut. Okay. No. There's no such thing. We don't, we don't condone that at all. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> now they're all going to think that when the camera's cut, all right. Two, oh, all right. there's no such legal way. You can change the oh, yeah, usage, yeah. right, from uh, to a C1, which yeah. is basically like, a, like a, a guest house. You've got to apply for the council, change the use for the property. If you get the change of use, you can do it. Boom. Right now, that's the legal way. The illegal way, which I really highly recommend you shouldn't do, but what people do, and seriously, you really shouldn't do this. But if you did do it, this is what you do. Um, <laughs> you would, um, you, people, what people do, because it's 90 days, is they put four different ads up on like Airbnb and Gumtree and stuff like that with different pictures of the, set of the, of the same property. Um, and then they rent that out for three months, that one out for three, but it's actually the same. The same. Uh, it, However, it is, legal. It is illegal. It is illegal. And if you get caught, it's a 20 grand do you fine. Do you remember in a podcast we done... So don't do it. Remember that fine, that, um, that news article we done? I, I can't remember. Nick will be able to tell yeah, you someone what got, someone was. Got, with a service it's conversation, ridiculous. there's not many rules, but the ones that are there, don't break them because they the, find the crap out of it. It was like £70,000 fine. It was a massive fine the person got for breaking the rule when she got caught. Um, so anyway. But the best way around it, the really best way around it, is to not do it in London. Find somewhere else it works because there's plenty of places. Yeah. Or do it for 90 days. It was three times better than you thought it was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're already three times better off. So we should have made your day, but you look very disappointed. Yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, no that's problem. a happy face. <laughs> no problem. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Give her a hand.